This is a dragonfly. He is covered in water droplets, or dew. This is because most arthropods remain completely motionless during the night. Arthropod, an invertebrate having jointed limbs and a segmented body with an exoskeleton made of chitin, referring to an insect, spider, crab, or other member of species with a hard, jointed exoskeleton and paired, jointed legs. In this video biography of arthropods, we will take a closer look at the main arthropods that make up this classification. First, we will go under the sea with Sebastian from Little Mermaid. Crabs are a primary example of an arthropod. They have a hard exoskeleton and every appendage is jointed. Colonictus sapidus, or the blue crab, is a swimming crab found in the Atlantic Ocean along the coast. The blue crab has recently been introduced to the coast of Central America, Europe, and Asia, most likely because of their very complex migratory life cycles that take them between estuaries or an arm of the sea that extends inland to meet the mouth of a river and open ocean. The clip you are watching is of a spider crab molting. This video is sped up for time and edited for content for the best viewing purposes. All arthropods need to molt. Crabs do this in a way that is different from land arthropods. Crabs take up water, causing pressure to build in all of its body cavities. This exoskeleton soon breaks open and the crab is able to push itself out of the old shell. The new exoskeleton is softer so it can stretch with the increase of body size of the crab, but it will eventually harden over time. Gonodactylus chirogra, or the mantis shrimp. It is the meanest shrimp in the deep blue sea. The mantis shrimp uses its front claws to pound and hit much of the food it eats. It is told that if the mantis shrimp gets a good hit on a fish, it will stun it. Here is a video of the mantis shrimp pounding on the side of its aquarium with its hammer-like fist. It is played in regular speed, and then the video is slowed down to one-tenth of its speed. Let's watch and listen to the great mantis shrimp. As we step out of the water and back onto land, our first arthropod that we meet is in the arachnid group, Desis martensi, or the sea spider. It lives partially in the ocean and partially on land. These small spiders live in intertidal rubble, and during the day they hide in a sealed air chamber that is made out of silk. At low tide, they come out to hunt stranded critters in the tide pools. In this photo, we see a sea spider on a coral head, and it has in its giant pinchers what looks like to be a pistol shrimp. As the tide lowers, we find trapped in a small pool Thermonictus marimatus, or the diving beetle. They are strong swimmers and prey on aquatic animals by tearing them to shreds with their powerful jaws. But be careful, they can also fly. When food supply gets low or the water pool gets too crowded, these diving beetles spread their wings and fly away. The females lay their eggs on stems of aquatic plants, and when the eggs hatch, the larvae, or water tigers, enter their newfound water habitat and begin their reign of terror. In many labs, diving beetle larvae are typically fed tadpoles or mosquito larvae, but in the wild, they eat anything that comes close to them. Here is a video of a diving beetle larva sucking the fluids from its prey The beetle larva is highly dependent on their visual system. The adults have typical arthropod compound eyes. The larva see the world through stomata. Stomata are simple lens eyes 
that are on either side of the head. The diving beetle larvae are told to have 24 stomata, and each one sees the world in a different way. Stranded on the beach, we find a snapper fish flopping around, struggling for air. We see it is chewing on something, and further examination shows that something is gripping the tongue of the fish, hoping to not get eaten. Actually, this is a Cymotha exigua, or a cymothoid isopod. Most cymothoids are parasites that feed on the flesh of fish. These parasites enter the fish through the gills and lodges itself in a cavity near the back of the mouth. There it stays, feeding on blood, mucus, and stray pieces of whatever the fish is eating for the rest of its life. On the beach, further away from the water, we see two horny females. The horned Anthophagus sagittarius, or dung beetles, they have horns in order to compete over reproductive resources. Poop. In this picture, two females are dueling it out for their favorite place to have babies. In the poop. Arachnids. These make up the scariest part of the arthropod group. Here we'll look at some pretty scary arachnids, the sulfagae or the camel spider. These spiders have been attacked by internet claims suggesting they are aggressive and will chase anything that gets near their territory, running 25 miles per hour while making a screaming sound. They also can jump several feet in the air while they eat, live, and lay their eggs in the bellies of camels. Too bad this is all lies. The camel spider, or sun spiders, are not spiders nor scorpions, but they do have a distinct evolutionary lineage within the arachnids category. They live in the shadows in order to survive. The chasing of the soldiers in the desert most likely comes from the camel spiders trying to hide in the men's shadows. Their size is somewhat true. Some are as big as dinner plates, but most are 10 to 11 centimeters. But their size is in just compensation of having no venom at all. But solifugids do not feed on animals larger than themselves, and they do not munch away on humans or camels. Another difference about these arthropods is that what looks like 10 legs is really 6 legs and 2 sensory appendages in the front and back. On another note, they cannot run 25 miles an hour. They run a nice 1.2 miles per hour at most. I'm gonna go up there Here's a man who thinks he knows a lot about spiders. What he doesn't know is how fast a spider reacts and how it will react under certain conditions. This is a giant huntsman spider, known for its aggressive nature and great jumping. Daddy, careful! Decided to get a bigger container because uh, because of the size of this one. I like to be really quick. Here we see a jumping spider that you would normally see in your house, or outside in your bushes, or on your car. Here's a short clip of a jumping spider set to gentle folk music. A monolithic bellowing bellowed from the ground, and all Vespa mandarinia, the Asian giant hornet. They are a predator of other insects and can be extremely aggressive to humans. Here is a video of where someone found one of these hornets dead while walking in Japan. Supposedly, their venom can melt flesh a and kill a non-allergic uh, person. Specimen of, uh, of a wasp. Can you imagine having this thing chase you down? Look at the uh, eyes and uh, the face on this. 
amazing. See the large compound eyes and the uh, multiple eyes there on the forehead. It's even getting closer. The wind is kind of buffering me. It's a rainy day today. It's really dropped. Temperature's really dropped. And uh, beautiful. See the beautiful hairs along the thorax there. Now, uh, one of the distinguishing features between bees and flies is that uh, bees, wasps, and flies is that uh, f well, uh, whereas both bees and wasps and flies they all have uh, four sections of their wings, bees and wasps actually have two separate wings. Can you see it right there? See the two joints coming out of the body there? Those are look at the beautiful body segments there, the uh, the, the uh, sections there. All insects have uh, three body segments. There's a head you can see here, beautiful head section. A thorax, that's where the uh, muscles are for the uh, uh, legs and uh, the wings, and then an abdomen. Now one of the characters in the abdomen back here is where a lot of the uh, internal organs and digestive uh, uh, elements, reproductive organs, are kept back here. Bees, wasps, and ants are known for their very narrow midsection between the uh, thorax and the abdomen. Now it's a little slippery, it's hard to hold this straight, extended. Look at that thing, wow! Can you imagine having that jammed inside you, uh, exuding some of uh, uh, the toxins into your body? Now we had some interesting comments from people after my first video yesterday. Some people were commenting that the, uh, the venom may be strong enough, potent enough to kill you on its own, whether or not you had uh, an allergic reaction or not. Some people said that uh, the, the toxin was strong enough to dissolve flesh, dissolve human flesh. Uh, I, don't know, I don't know the facts on, on the potency of the venom, or even if venom is the right word, but uh, I can imagine that could do some serious damage. Although I've been told that they are not so aggressive when they're wandering about in the field, that they're typically more aggressive when you disturb their nests. This is a screenshot from Jurassic Park, where the creator of the park, John Hammond, is viewing what started his replication of the dinosaur. Inside his polished amber rock, atop his walking cane, is a mosquito, another arthropod. Here are more pictures of arthropods immersed in amber that were found in Ethiopia earlier this year. These fossils are useful in piecing together the interplay of life in ancient ecosystems. They give a snapshot of how things worked. This helps fill in the gaps in the Cretaceous African biodiversity.